This is weird, I've just got this. Let's do this. Should I be a doctor or a dentist? If that's the question on your mind, well, I might be able to help. My name's Dr. Ashley Hilton, and I'm a dual qualified doctor and dentist, so I'm in a decent position to help you answer that question as to what you should choose for your career. So we're gonna look at all things like pay, work-life balance, status, growth, meaningfulness and fulfillment from a career, and basically all of the things that you might want to address and think about when you're choosing a lifelong career such as medicine or dentistry. Yes, one will probably get you more Tinder swipes, the other one might make you more likely to get a Lamborghini, but is really that the best question to answer when you're thinking about what to do with your career? So I've broken both careers down and based them on some criteria that I got from this book, which is all about how to make life and work meaningful and just generally be happy, and has had a huge impact on how I've gone about choosing my career. But firstly, a warning. If you are a doctor or a dentist watching this and you are prone to nitpicking, just be aware that this is a very short summative video that is going to compare very briefly the two careers. So if you feel like nitpicking and commenting with some obvious exceptions, then please refrain from doing so. You are probably procrastinating doing this anyway. So go away and watch something that is a lot more productive for you and your level. So we're going to dive in by looking at seven questions you should ask yourself that are going to help you decide whether you should become a doctor or a dentist. Question number one is how important is your job to you? So for some people, it is a big important part of their self-worth and defines who they are, which is why it may be subconsciously some Sometimes people choose to become a doctor because they are saving lives and definitely helping people in a very, very impactful way. And that's not to say that dentists don't help people. They're a really important part of society as well. If everybody wanted to be a doctor and we had no dentist, then we'd all have teeth like Austin Powers and that would not be good either. And if you're somebody who's looking to make that sort of impact by performing life-saving surgery or maybe attending crash calls when people are really critically ill and having that sort of impact on people's lives, then maybe going down the doctor route is a lot more suited to you. The second question you need to ask yourself is, are you a people person? When you are working in a hospital as a doctor, you're amongst a team of nurses, the various other healthcare professionals, and you can be as part of a really big team. In the hospital, you're interacting with all sorts of people from all different different walks of life. I, I always say that the hospital is probably one of the most unique environments in the world where it kind of assembles everybody from all different parts of society under one roof. The NHS has over 200 different nationalities working for it, so you're interacting with so many different people all the time. However, when you're in a dental practice, typically you will probably be in a very small team. It depends how big the practice is, but still, when you're working in your working day, you'll be having one patient at a time. You do get to chat to them, but obviously a lot of the time you have your fingers in there eyes, so it's difficult to have a conversation and all you'll usually have is your nurse your dental nurse working alongside you that you chat with throughout the day between patients the rest of the time you might be talking with reception staff and other dentists maybe who are in the practice and maybe some other people that you come across but it is safe to say that it's less sociable than the typical working life of a doctor of course if you're a GP that's a similar setup to that of a dental practice and remember that nearly 50% of doctors go on to be GPs so that is something to bear in mind as well. But before we go on, whether you decide to go for medicine or dentistry, I've been helping people for the last 12 years who are applying to medical and dental school in the UK to make their application as competitive as possible. So actually this entire channel, and if you check out this video here, is dedicated to showing you where you can find resources that are going to make you as competitive as possible to get into the most demanding medical and dental schools in the UK. The third question you need to ask yourself is how much do you like your independence? Because if you go on to become a dentist, there is a high probability that you may go on to own your own practice, which means that you can be your own boss, you can create your own little business, which is like making your own little world where you set the rules and you can control exactly how much time you spend there and kind of arrange your week and your day to be exactly how you want, within reason, of course. However, when you're a doctor, you're usually part of the NHS, which is a huge, huge establishment. One of, I think it's still the fifth biggest employer in the world. So obviously, if you wanted to make changes there, your best chances of making anything significant are standing outside Trafalgar Square in the rain holding a picket sign probably getting covered in pigeon droppings. So it's something to bear in mind because when you're a dentist you can control your world a lot more rather than being in the NHS as a doctor which means that you're a lot more of a cog in a wheel. Another question you need to ask yourself is how important is your life outside of work? As a doctor I certainly have had to make a lot of sacrifices giving up a lot of weekends, missing big birthdays, even some weddings and maybe some stag do's as well. Well, so 
it is worth it on the whole, but definitely medicine takes away a lot from your personal life more than dentistry. Because dentistry, you can typically set up as a nine to five type job, which means that you get your evenings, you get your weekends, and generally you have a lot more time and maybe a little bit more money, which we'll discuss later, to go out and enjoy your hobbies and your social life a bit more. The only difference I would say that it may be at medical and dental school, it's slightly the other way around. When you're a medicine student and you go on placement, you are purely there to observe. It's rare that you get to get involved as much. You might get a few skills to practice and a few things thrown your way, but typically you are a fly on the wall observing the other doctors. You might go and chat to patients, but you're not needed there and you don't have really any responsibility. It's completely the opposite when you're a dental student because you get patients and you actually learn the skills so that you're performing the skills that you'll go on to do as a professional dentist while you're actually a student. So you have your own list, you have your own patients and caseload to take care of, and although you're being super supervised while you're doing that. You actually do have responsibility for your patients, but if you don't turn up, they don't get seen, maybe they get handed on to a colleague of yours, but essentially you have a lot more responsibility as a dental student than you do typically as a medical student. So before we go on to look at how much money you'll earn as a doctor or dentist, if you're applying to either medicine or dentistry in the UK, this channel is dedicated purely to how to get into both of those degrees. So if you wanna check out the channel here by looking at this video, you can see exactly how I help people who are applying and we've had lots of success with getting people into their first choice medical and dental school at the first attempt. I bring out new videos every week that are current to that time of the application cycle for the year. So if you want to stay on top of things and just know what you need to know at the right time of the year and the application cycle, just hit subscribe and you'll get weekly videos from me. So when it comes to money, of course both jobs are well paid, but there's definitely a lot more scope to earn more money as a dentist earlier on in your career. When you come out of medical school, you have to do, if you're staying in the NHS and working, both the foundation years, so years one and two, and then after that, even if you go on to a medical career that's gonna progress up the, all the way up to consultant, that will take you probably about 10 years from the time you graduate, roughly, to get to that stage. And at that stage, you earn about 72,000 pounds a year minimum. But the thing to bear in mind with that is that it does take those 10 years typically to get there. And the pay does go up quite incrementally, and it's usually a big jump once you finally get to consultancy. So the pay in the run up to that time isn't particularly great. The average pay for a foundation year one doctor is about £25,000 and for a foundation year two doctor about £28,000. Now if you compare that with a dentist, when they come out of dental school they don't even necessarily need to go into the equivalent which is the dental foundation one year of training coming out of, of dental school. But even if you do decide to do that, that's about £35,000. But then you can go into private practice or even into a NHS or semi-NHS half NHS half private practice and you can earn quite good money straight away. I know lots of people who one or two years out of dental school are earning 60, maybe even 80,000 pounds or even more. You usually get paid by how good you are and how quick and efficient you are. So it does give you a lot more scope to earn more money. But then people who are very skilled, very efficient, who do quite expensive treatments or work in maybe cosmetic dentistry or in fancy parts of town, they can be earning quite a significant amount more. And then if you own a practice that's successful, then you can be earning mega money as a dentist. But the pay is a lot more humble as a doctor. So say if you want to live in London where the housing is ridiculously expensive, you might find yourself for a long time into your 20s and 30s living a lot more like a typical student would elsewhere with in the middle of the night you can hear banging techno music next door, whereas the dentists are typically living in a swankier apartment where they can afford to be away from all the trouble and the noise. The sixth question you need to ask yourself is, how much do you want to be stimulated and pushed to continually grow and develop? Now medicine has over 70 specialties, which means there is so much variety for what you can choose and the direction you can take your career. And definitely there are certain personality types that are attracted to certain career types. That saying of birds of a feather flock together, I find is so true when it comes to medical specialties. But also in medicine, the day itself can have so much variety. Often no two days are the same. You can be having a very chilled morning and all of a sudden a crash bleep will go off or someone will come in who has to be rushed into theatre and your whole day is completely changed just at the drop of a hat. Whereas with dentistry, it can be just a little bit more steady. The thing with dentistry is that I find that it's really down to the individual to make their career as exciting for them as possible. It's similar to GPs in medicine actually. I find that people are a bit more prone to 
becoming a bit stagnant in their career. And I think that that is usually down to the individual. And really, I always say that if you are bored in your career, then it's on you to do something. And it's usually down to a lack of imagination. Whereas medicine is continually developing, not that dentistry isn't, there are always developments and new treatments in dentistry, but medicine because of the pace and the kind of breadth and depth of the knowledge that you need to have for what your specialty is, you have to stay up to date a lot more, you kind of get forced to stay up to date, otherwise you get left behind. Whereas dentistry, of course, there is always new stuff going on, but with that, you still have your core fundamentals and your treatments that you stick to and tend to kind of stay very similar within a certain range. But like I say, there are always developments and there's lots going on and lots of exciting new stuff continuously in, de in dentistry as well. The final question and probably the most important one you need to ask yourself is, how passionate am I about this job? Really, it doesn't matter what you decide. If you love it, you will find it so much easier and you'll be driven to do all the difficult stuff that it takes to get there. There are many days where I've been covered in all sorts of bodily fluids that I'm not going to go into right now on this video, but it's the kind of thing that sometimes if you're feeling weak, it can make you doubt yourself and think, do I really want this? And it's only if you're really passionate about this. The pay and all that other stuff, it doesn't really matter at the end when it comes to actually what you do and whether you actually love and enjoy what you're doing in this life. Whether you are going into dentistry or medicine in the UK, the chances are you'll have to sit an exam called the UCAT. So I recommend that you check out this playlist here where I go through all of the things that you need to know, cover all of the sections and the best techniques to score the highest possible to get that top, top score required to be competitive enough to get into some of the hardest medical and dental schools in the UK. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you over in that playlist.